Hi folks, this is Clint Eastwood, and it's time to make your day with this pre-calculus lesson. Now before you get uh, all confident after this lesson, you guys, this is actually an Algebra 1 lesson. It's taught in Algebra 1, so, uh, don't, wor so just don't worry. Pre-calculus gets much more challenging than this lesson, so this first, these first few uh, chapter and a half or so is pretty much Algebra 1. Okay, so this was taught in the last lesson, you guys, so go ahead and copy that stuff down and work those out. And then uh, make sure that you get uh, these answers right here. Okay, all right, so that was board problem two. Okay, so linear equations. Okay, so standard form is ax plus by plus c equals zero. Um, uh, my algebra books have always wrote ax plus by equals c. So this c could either be where the zero is or it could be on that one. Doesn't matter. This book is choosing to make it plus c equals zero. So if you have another other a number other than zero, then it's add or subtract it out, put it over here. Okay, and both a and b can't be zero. So standard form, you guys. Um, and the slope is uh, negative a over b. I like to say opposite a over b. So opposite the number in front of x over the number in front of y. Alrighty. And uh, the x-intercepts is when y equals zero. So if I just let y equal zero, then I solve for x. And the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So then solve for y. All right, so graph this equation using the x and y intercepts. Okay, so when um, uh, what I would like to do first is get the 4 on both sides. Now, this is typically what I've seen as standard form, but it doesn't matter whichever way you do it. Okay, so now let x be 0, so this x goes away, and you have 2y equals 4, so y would be 2. So um, uh, that would be my y intercept right here, 0, comma 2. And then when y is 0, uh, cover up the 2y, and you're left with x equals 4. That's the x intercepts, okay? So then graph those two points, all right? So there they are, and you're done. Okay, so it's slope-intercept form. You guys have seen this, y equals mx plus b. The slope is uh, rise over run, and your b is your y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. So graph the line using the y-intercept and the slope. Okay, so here's the first one. I'm going to go ahead and graph that uh, plus 4 right there, and then go down 1 to the right 2. See this minus? This minus goes only for the top, so down 1 to the right 2. So graph this plus 4 first, and then down 1 to the right 2 and plot another point, and there you go, connected right there. Alrighty, okay, this one. I think I used the intercept method on this one, you guys. In fact, I know I did. When x equals 0, 3x goes away, you're left with y equals 6, so I had to go up and go up above a little bit and put a 6 right here. And then when y equals 0, 3x equals 6, so x equals 2, so I'm going to graph those two points, and, and voila, there you go. Okay, nice and easy. You remember that? Okay, the zeros of a function are when the line crosses the x-axis, or when y equals 0, and it has the coordinates x comma 0. Alright, so it's like your y-intercept, or your x-intercept, you guys. Uh, so in this case, where m equals 0, in the case where the slope equals 0, you have the constant function y equals b, where b is some number, like y equals 2, like your graph say horizontal line. Okay, y equals just a number as a horizontal line. x equals a number as a vertical line. We'll see some of those in a little bit. Okay, write an equation in slope-intercept form of each line. Okay, this one has slope 8, y-intercept to negative 1. Remember, y equals mx plus b. Boom! All right, slope 8, and it passes through that point. Okay, so now I know that the slope is 8, y equals 8x plus b, and then substitute that point in right there to get b. Okay, so when I substitute in negative 7 for x and 5 for y, I get b to be 61, so there's my answer, y equals 8x plus 61. Okay, passes through these two points, okay? Now this is the y-intercept right here, so I don't need to do any subbing in anything. Once I get the slope, I just there's the y-intercept, it's 5. 0 comma anything is always my y-intercept. Okay, remember the slope formula? y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so I get 5 eighths. Okay, so y equals uh, 5 eighths x plus this 5 right here. Okay? Alrighty, uh, let's see what else do I have. Okay, graph the horizontal line that passes through uh, 4, negative 3. Remember, your horizontal line is y equals. In this case, y equals negative 3. That's your answer. Okay, it looks like we're just writing the equations. Okay, a vertical line that passes through negative 3, 1. A vertical line is x equals, so x would equal negative 3. And those are your answers right there. Okay, I should have chose different numbers, you guys. I should have made this like negative 2 or something, or made this, I shouldn't have made these numbers the same. But anyways, I chose it because this is my y value right here, and this is my x value. And vertical means x, horizontal means y. All right, okay. Parallel lines have the same slope with no points in common. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocals. So, for example, if I knew the slope of one line was two-thirds, then the perpendicular line would be to flip it and change the sign. So it would be negative three-halves. 
All right, so lines that coincide are the same line, you guys. They're, it's um, and they're usually just written written in different forms, you guys. They're the same line. So determine whether the lines, uh, whether the graphs of each pair of equations are parallel, they're coinciding with each other, or they're meaning they're the same, perpendicular, or none of these. Okay, so look at these guys. All right, now, can you see that uh, uh, if I did opposite a over b, I get negative two over negative three, which is a positive two thirds. Here I get negative 6 over negative 9, which is a positive 6 ninths, which is 2 thirds. So the slopes are the same. Now, <clears throat> if these numbers were, can you see that uh, uh, 2 times 3 equals 6 and 3 times 3 equals 9? But 5 times 3 does not equal 21. So these guys don't coincide with each other. They are parallel with each other. If it would have been, say, say this would have been 15, then they would have been the exact same line, and they would have been coinciding with each other. But these guys are parallel because they both have slope 2 thirds. Okay? So parallel. Okay, how about this one? All right, so on this one here, the slope of this one is going to be negative um, uh, 12 over 6, which is negative 2. If I add 2y to both sides, I get 4x plus 2y equals 6. And I get 4 over, or sorry, negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And so I want to see, are they multiples of each other? This 4 times 3 is 12. This 2, and I put it on this side over here, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. Since this is a multiple of this one right here, actually the top one is times 3 of the bottom one, then these guys coincide with each other. All right? See the difference? These guys, uh, the multiple is not the same with the 5 and 21, but it is all the way through with the 18 and 6. So they're coinciding. It's the same exact line. Okay, what about these guys? Okay, the slope of this one is negative 6 over 1. So negative 6, and the slope of this one is positive 1, 6. So they're opposite reciprocals of each other. They are perpendicular. Okay, uh, what else do I have for you? Okay, write the standard form of the equation of the line that passes through negative 2, 10, and is parallel to the graph 2x plus 5y plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so parallel means I want the same slope as this. So the slope of this is negative 2 fifths. Okay, so I know it's going to be y equals negative 2 fifths x plus b. All right, and then substitute this point in to get b. So this is x, this is y. So there it is right there. And I changed this to 50 over 5 to get common denominators, you guys. Okay, so a negative times a negative here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 fifths. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 4 fifths from both sides to get 46 fifths. So there's my answer. y equals um, uh, negative 2 fifths x plus b. All righty. Let's see, what else do I have? Isn't this exciting? Yeah. Oh, they want it in standard form. I missed that part, you guys. So multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of the fractions because you can't put it in slope-intercept form. They want it in standard form. So there you go, that final answer when I multiply both sides by 5. Okay, now if you're in my pre-calculus class, that would be your homework.